for Senator Risch for his remarks. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the tensions, as we all know, are high in the Taiwan Strait, and we all know why. China is taking increasingly aggressive actions to pressure Taiwan to unify. We're seeing more and more disinformation, political attacks, economic coercion, and military downright belligerence. I'm glad this committee is holding this hearing at this critical time on Taiwan, as we increase the time, energy, and resources devoted to supporting this Indo-Pacific democracy, we need to be able to tell the American people why it is so important. We also need more extensive discussions with civilian and military leaders, including in a classified setting, to properly engage on the issues at hand. I hope we can work together to hold classified briefings on Taiwan uh, early after the first of the year. A unilateral change in the status quo regarding Taiwan would not only threaten the security and liberty of 23 million Taiwanese, but also significantly damage vital U.S. interests and alliances in the Indo-Pacific. We would lose a model democracy at a time of creeping authoritarianism. Uh, it would give China a platform in the first island chain to dominate the Western Pacific and threaten, indeed, U.S. homeland. The consequences for Japan's security and therefore, the U.S.-Japan alliance are hard to overstate. Semiconductor sl uh, supply chains would fall into Chinese, uh, China's hands, and it would embolden China in other territorial disputes, including with India and in the South China Sea. Many U.S. allies and partners fear Taiwan would just be China's first step, and China's aggressive actions give us no reason to believe otherwise. To deter the Chinese Communist Party from coercing Taiwan, the United States must be laser-focused on concrete actions that put Taiwan in the best possible position to defend against Chinese military. Last month, I introduced, uh, as the chairman indicated, the Taiwan Deterrence Act with several colleagues. The bill authorizes $2 billion in foreign military financing for Taiwan every year through 2032. Such a program would accelerate Taiwan's acquisition of asymmetric capabilities and incentivize closer U.S.-Taiwan joint defense uh, coordination. I look forward to working with the chairman uh, as he uh, puts his bill forward and melding the two bills together. This is not, I'm sure the chairman would agree, a partisan uh, matter. This is a matter that is important to all American people. I, I applaud uh, President Tsai's commitment to important defense reforms. Def defensive uh, reforms that we have been urging, including recent purchases of key capabilities and the planned establishment of an agency for civilian resilience. But more needs to be done to ensure the Taiwanese military fully implements her reform-minded vision. Close coordination with our executive and legislative branches is essential. The U.S. government should prioritize getting the right capabilities to Taiwan quickly and enhancing other important forms of defense engagement. If there's a problem, the executive branch should tell Congress, and we all need to fix it. We should be delivering the same messages on reform to our friends in Taiwan. What we do in the next two years is of great importance, but what we say also matters. I'm deeply concerned by confused and varying statements on our Ty Taiwan policy from uh, high members in the uh, current administration, including the president. This confusion demonstrates weakness, and weakness invites, always invites more aggression. Our, ta our Taiwan policy has remained consistent, regardless of the false claims by Chinese leaders. U.S. policy towards Taiwan has always called for robust support for uh, its defense. This is enshrined in the Taiwan Relations Act. Uh, there's been uh, uh, much uh, talk recently about U.S. policy regarding Taiwan, and I were to urge anyone, uh, whether they're friends or enemies, to read the Taiwan Relations Act. This is United States law. This is not a suggestion. It's not a thought. It is law that was put in place on January 1st, 1979, and it's called the Taiwan Relations Act. It sets forth the policy of the United States regarding Taiwan. It is binding. It is the law. It is not a suggestion. It is a commitment to ourselves. It is a commitment to our allies. It's a commitment to Taiwan, and it's a commitment to the world. I will quote very, very briefly from the act. 
in section two, uh, subsection uh, B5, uh, it, it says that the, uh, uh, it is the policy of the United States to provide Taiwan with arms of a defensive character, and it is the policy of the United States in subsection six to maintain the capacity of the United States to resist any resort to force or other forms of coercion that would jeopardize the security or the social economic system of the people on Taiwan. Section 3 goes on to say, 3A, in furtherance of the policy set forth in Section 2 of this Act, the United States will make available to Taiwan such defense articles and defense services in such quantity as may be necessary to enable Taiwan to, main, to maintain uh, a sufficient self-defense capability. This is the law of America. It is the law that has been in place since January 1, 1979. So any debate that's going on right now needs to start with this law. This is where we begin. In, uh, in 1982, President Reagan wrote that the linkage between U.S. policy on arms sales to Taiwan and whether China pursues a peaceful resolution across the Taiwan Strait is a permanent imperative of U.S. foreign policy. Today, China sends large numbers of military aircraft into the Taiwan Strait for what they call rehearsals for future operations. It threatens to take all necessary means to unify with Taiwan and uses its economic might to punish countries that engage with Taiwan. These are not tenets of a peaceful resolution, which is what's called for in the United States policy. These actions, coupled with China's massive military buildup, create a very different geopolitical environment. The United States must continue executing our long-standing Taiwan policy in a, matter, in a manner that matches today's geopolitical realities. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Thank you, Senator Risch, for those uh, remarks, and we're very much in sync here. Uh, <clears throat> let's turn to Ambassador uh, Quittenbrink first, uh, and then Dr. Ratner. We will have your full statements included uh, for the record without objection. We'd ask you to summarize them 